I, th I thought that I was never going to be able to play my favorite character that I've ever played. I, I thought I'd never be able to do it ever again. And, and doing it in an audible for format means people can't see this old face. And I'm just happy as hell. Hey, Denny Geek fans, Aaron Sagers here. It's New York Comic Con 2023, and I am joined by the cast of Slayers, a Buffy verse stories, which is an audible original podcast with nine episodes available now, and it's an expansion of the Buffy verse. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about this. This is exciting. This is very exciting. And I guess I want to kick things off with like, what was the initial phone call where you were told, we're putting together this project, we're kind of getting a band together? Uh, Amber Benson, uh, who co-wrote uh, the project with uh, Christopher Golden, uh, called me up and said, do you want to play Spike? And I was like, well, I can't do that because I'm old. Uh, and she said, well, it's just audible. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, uh, I hadn't thought of that. I, th I thought that I was never going to be able to play my favorite character that I've ever played. I, I thought I'd never be able to do it ever again. And, and doing it in an audible for format means people can't see this old face. And I'm just happy as hell. The idea of getting back with these wonderful people, uh, because the thing is that we are perfectly cast in these roles. And we can kind of, without too much effort, embody them really, really well, I'll be honest. Uh, and just the idea of, of just getting back and just juggling with really good actors who are really well cast in this specific role, I just jumped like within two seconds. There's a weird uh, synchronicity because, you know, like as, as I said, we've spoken a lot of various interviews and Comic Cons and you always said like, I've got a couple years as Spike and then I'm gonna be old. But meanwhile, you were doing the voice of Harry Dresden and it never clicked with you. They were like, oh, wait, I could do the voice of Spike. Never. It never clicked. No. Amber, I'm going to throw it to you and ask, like, oh, big question. Sort of like the the why. The why now and the why. I think the world has gone kind of bananas recently. And and I say recently, I mean the last, like, five years. Uh, I think we need more stories of powerful women on both sides of the the dark and the light and i think it's really important that we that we sort of we show women doing powerful things taking control of their own destinies and making the world a better place and i think sometimes you just need to leave your cruddy like cruddy day and live in this world with us and i think that's 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 the best you can do with entertainment you can take people and give them a wonderful experience where they feel magic and power and and they just want to live there with us Emma, how about you like this this kind of initial conversation she's like hey so remember you know when we work together uh so i want to bring the gang back in a way and um and i said well no like absolutely not i'm like not doing it i don't want to go i don't want to go back. Anya's dead. I want to leave her alone. And then she kept talking for a couple of minutes and I was like, I'm 100% in. <laughs> I'm without a doubt. I want to do what you're doing. I, I'm happy to. I want to. Um, and it was not, it was more than, I mean, it exceeded all my expectations. It was the funnest time I've had on a job in a really long time. I worked with Amber one, one time before as a director and uh, she was doing a movie called Chance while we were filming uh, the last project. And, uh, I thought that I was just like doing someone a favor. Uh, and then I, I got on set and she was such an amazing producer and director. Yeah. I think I got one of my favorite performances of my lifetime on that small film. The thought of working with her again as a director and never mind her, she's a wonderful actor, but she's an absolutely fabulous, uh, writer, producer and director. And mm -hmm. we were just in such good hands the whole time. Uh, just the perfect person to pass the baton to. Uh, and, and I've worked with Christopher Golden too. He, he taught me how to write comic books and he's, he's both very talented and very patient, uh, which I need someone to be patient with me. There's also this multiverse element to Slayers. It's, it's a, not just a big world, it's a big universe out there. Why is that an appeal to introduce into the Buffyverse? Firstly, I want to echo what Amber said and just add that even our big bad is just trying to make the world a better place. And when you listen to it, you'll find out 
what Drusilla is attempting to her seems to be the way to make the world a better place. Um, but, uh, but the reason to do it is exactly that. We wanted to uh, make sure that we could bring the fans the happier time, uh, bring the fans Tara and Cordelia and Anya uh, and Drusilla in a brand new way. And also introduce a whole new right. generation. Right. <laughs> and introduce, and again, like, and, and Leia, as Indira, is really the, the entry point. You know, she's the one that brings you in, uh, and she's a fan, and that's what I love. We want we wanted Indira to be a representation of the fans, so that she could walk through it with them uh, and be just as excited as they would be, but also then get to kick ass and be a slayer herself. Right, and Leia, actually, let me throw it to you because, as Indira, you're this character that's kind of uh, we we come to find out getting a little bit of. Um, uh, Slayer babysat by Spike, I guess, in a way. He's kind of leading you through this world. You're entering into this universe where you've got folks like Juliet and Amber and Charisma who've embodied these voices before. Was it a bit of a challenge for you to establish that initial voice of Indira? Yeah, uh, completely. I mean, I think that was one of the things I was most nervous about with starting the project because... Um, a lot of the folks here, of course, they've been doing it for a while, and I wanted to make sure that I... <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure that I was adding something, or at least understood the tone. Youthful? No, no, no! <laughs> Juliet is ageless. That's the thing. That's true. They're vampires. Um, <laughs> but uh, making sure that I was entering this world and, and doing it justice, really, um, was really important to me. Um, and I, again, I had a lot of nerves before that first first day, but my first call with Christopher and Amber and then Casey, it was like all my nerves went away. They made the environment just so safe and wonderful. They're wonderful people, but also extremely talented. And so it was like walking into that recording booth, I felt completely prepared and ready for what I was about to embark on. But then the cherry on top was just how wonderful the cast was too and is. Charisma, we get Cordelia the Slayer, and this feels so natural, and also like a cool evolution, and we get to play in this multiverse, and I would, maybe also even a vindication. Can you, can you speak to all of those elements and why you wanted to take on the role of Cordelia? Who doesn't want to kick ass? You know, who doesn't want to play an empowered woman that has um, a great understanding of the world that we live in and wants to make it a better place? That's a, an incredible role. I think it was challenging at first when I started to balance the snark and the wit and the humor and the pithiness of Cordelia with the world weary sense of slayer isms or what she does. Um, so I think. That was a challenge, but when Ta when Tara when Amber asked me, um, you know, would you? It was a delicate question because it was such a painful um, ending for Cordelia in the past. So to be able to bring her back to life, I had questions, you know. But in the end, when I when I try to practice yes as much as possible, I try to be in the practice of saying yes instead of being no or deflective of like immediate no. I try to say yes. And this is a dear friend of mine who has had my back in a lot of ways and I want to be supportive of her. So I wanted to say yes, but I had to protect myself a bit. And so when we spoke about it, you know, I also, you know, was concerned about embodying a role that is so beloved. You know, there's only really one Slayer that the fandom really cares about. So I felt, uh, a little bit intimidated by that and concerned about backlash and all of, you know, there was just a lot of concerns, but in the end, I trust her and I trust her vision and I think she's capable and she's talented. So, and to be reunited mm -hmm. with these people again and to be in the room with them again, that was, I, of course, I, my instincts were yes, but like I had questions. And ultimately she was able to assuage those questions and insecurities in a way that made me um, feel good about saying yes, so mm -hmm. I did. I had a similar conversation with Amber on the phone about that. Um, and again, having 
my own feelings about the way Anya was handled. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just had, I had, you know, there are some wounds. There's just like, oof, that stings. It's, it's a, mm-hmm. you know, which was, you know, that was the lead in for like, do you want to revisit? I'm like, no, like, right. thank you, no. I don't need to, re- you know, to review any of that time again. I'm good. Um, but again, with Amber, who is also a friend and love, we just love all, we, yeah. like, we love her. Um, she's just so good. She's such a natural. She's wonderful as a director because she's been an actor. So she gets it, you know. Um, and there was a lot of, I feel like there would be a lot of closure and also like a, a reawakening for a character that I too like loved dearly. Mm-hmm. She's people orientated and she's yeah. in service of the project and supportive of the actors that creates a space to perform at your best. Yeah. I was in an isolation booth watching everyone else work because I had a cold. I didn't want to give it to them. And I was just watching you guys just kick it. Uh, and it, uh, she's so good. He's really the cheerleader. So he's, good. Have you ever noticed that, like, in every mm-hmm. interview, yeah. he's always he's pumping all of us up? Yeah. He's the cheerleader. It's yeah. easy because You're you guys so are sweet. awesome. It just feels like overwhelmingly there's this feeling of, like, almost catharsis that, that came out of kind of going back to these characters. For me, it was, I, I ended up, I got an email from Chris saying, hey, I might have something you might be interested in. I was like, all right, cool. Because I, I kind of left this whole world behind a while ago. I work in video games now. Um, and I was like, yeah, okay, cool, man, whatever. I've, you know, I've known Chris for years. I've known Amber for a long time. I also worked with her on a, an independent film that she cast me in called Lovers, Liars, and Lunatics, and she's amazing. And he was like, yeah, Amber and I are working on something I think you might be interested in. And I was like, all right, cool. And then when he told me what it was, I was like, yeah, I'd love to do Clem again. That I mean, who wouldn't? It was... He's the oh best. my God! He's stop. He's just the best. Like he was so like I just wanted to cuddle him. Right. I just the, the, the relationship between the two. You're so good. Oh my God! Thank you. I love your character so much. And we get some cool new stuff out of Clem too. Yes. yes. So you know, at the end, I only did eight episodes of the previous iteration, and it like radically altered my entire life. Um, so to get to come back and do this has been this new iteration and be like a full fledged part of everything and to watch everybody work and to get to do scenes with people that I never did scenes with and to do more scenes with people I did, but barely. Well, and Julia, Drusilla is the big bad of this series, but it it seems interesting to me because this is a character that's both fresh and familiar. And I was curious from your perspective, You've had a lot of life experiences since you initially were Drusilla. So, so, look, we've all had a lot of life experiences uh, in the last few years. She's 300 but, years old. Don't rub it in. <laughs> who is who is Drusilla now, and how does she reflect who you are now and how you have evolved? Well, I think one of the things that's interesting in in this material is that Drusilla is not an appendage and she is completely uh, autonomous and independent and she drives a lot of the action. And so I think that that, that is, was exciting for me. Um, and hopefully I'm driving some of the action in my own life as well. Seems like these characters have a lot more, have agency uh, and it's, it's very exciting in that way to see Drusilla moving the action forward to see Cordelia now the slayer that we all know that she is. So it's it's very exciting to see. I know we're out of time, but I'm loving this. <laughs> slayer is a Buffyverse story. It's on Audible, nine episodes right now, an Audible original podcast. Check it out with this amazing team. Thanks so much for joining us at New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm.